About 70% of the land in the lower 48 states is owned by private individuals. And we believe that the fate of the environment really depends on the quality of the decisions made by the men and women who own and operate that land. My name is Dave White. I'm the chief of the Natural Resources Conservation Service. Long grazing NRCS is a USDA agency. We have about 2,900 field offices, and we have people all over the country that are agronomists, biologists, engineers. This is Working Lands for Wildlife, uh, Lesser Prairie Chicken Initiative. And these technical people work one-on-one -on -one with producers to solve natural resource problems. Maybe spread the maps out over here. And... My name is Roy Bealey, and I'm a rancher here in Comanche County, Kansas. This photo here is probably taken early 1900s. My great-great-grandfather, he homesteaded here and started this place, and I'm fifth generation, and hopefully keep continuing on down the line with my children. <laughs> Love the outdoors and the solitude, and raising you know, cow-calf, taking care of them has just kind of always been a, a part of our lifestyle. The prairie chicken is a fun bird to watch in the early spring when they do their uh, mating ritual. Yeah, there's always been prairie chickens around. I think their numbers have declined. The lesser prairie chicken is a native game bird of the southern Great Plains of the United States. I'm Christian Hagen, and I'm the science advisor to the Lesser Prairie Chicken Initiative for the NRCS. This bird once occupied uh, vast areas of a five-state region. Since European settlement, that range has been largely contracted by about 90%. Because of that contraction, we've actually seen that species listed as a candidate for protection under the Endangered Species Act. So this is the eastern red cedar. Historically, large herds of bison and periodic fire kept this tree at bay. This tree is now occurring in areas large enough that it's actually displacing or removing habitat for native species like the lesser prairie chicken. So as simple and funny as it sounds, prairie chickens are a prairie species. And so plants like a, a cedar tree uh, represent a habitat that the bird will simply not use. But even at lower densities, what this does is it actually provides predators, things like the coyote and the hawk. It provides them an extra advantage and may actually increase the predation rates on the prairie chicken. So the, the wonderful thing that happens when you remove these trees is we're really returning the prairie to its historic condition. Trees and the chickens don't get along very good, and the cedars, they also use groundwater that would take away from grass production. There's just not enough grass for the livestock operation. This cedar here was about 10 years old mechanical clearing is about the only way to, to get on top of something like this. These people have to make money off, of, off the cattle ranching business. I'm Dusty Taha, Rangeland Management Specialist with Natural Resources Conservation Service in South Central Kansas. All right, so that's the North contract. We help landowners by providing them a, a prescribed grazing plan. The program in, includes financial assistance in, in brush clearing as well as uh, grazing incentive payments. And I mean, them chickens are all kind of through this area. And we know there's chickens here on, on this ranch. Um, we hope to increase their numbers and hopefully Roy will, Roy will see that happening. Hopefully also he'll see that, that the rotational grazing program will pay off in benefits in the, in the ranching business as well. I don't see the, these as restrictions. I believe that a guy needs to, should take care of his operation regardless uh, the involvement of NRCS. Our ma major goal is to just to be profitable. What the Fish and Wildlife Service has done is, is they said if a, a farmer, rancher works with us, develops a conservation plan, implements those conservation practices, they will give them certainty from regulation for up to 30 years. We've taken the fear out of the Endangered Species Act, and not just for today or tomorrow, but for a generation, for 30 years.
It's not about a, a bird or a turtle. This is about changing the whole paradigm of how we deal with the Endangered Species Act in America. You can go to the left, I can go to the right. I think all species are important to protect. They're also important to protect their habitats. My name is Holly Niederreiter. I'm a wildlife biologist with the Delaware Division of Fish and Wildlife in the Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program. This is like the perfect nesting spot for a turtle. The main thing that we're trying to do is protect bog turtles. The bog turtle is the smallest turtle in North America. It's about the size of the palm of your hand as an adult. It's the color of the mud in which it lives. So far what we've found is that turtles aren't doing well in Delaware. Um, we've really done an aggressive search for new habitats and we found new habitats, but we're not finding turtles in any of those sites. So that's really disappointing. No turtles today. You know, we don't know exactly what happened to those populations, but what's happened around those is there's been a lot of development. And when you put in something like a whole housing development, that changes the hydrology of the whole area. Um, and it, if it doesn't actually fill the wetland itself, it can end up just pulling the water away from it. There are definitely some landowners who really don't want endangered species on their property. There is a, a lot of fear surrounding the Endangered Species Act, and that's one of the things we wanted to overcome with that, to change it from confrontation to collaboration. So if we control the vegetation here, what I'm hoping is that we can get more of the open canopy areas where the, the turtles can nest and hopefully have a higher reproduction. If a producer does everything they can to protect a bog turtle, we are not going to come in and require you to do anything more. So that producer knows there's nobody going to mess with them. They have the certainty that they've done what they needed to do. We found a way that brings people together. We can give good value to the taxpayer. We can save these species. We can make sure that our farmers and ranchers economically survive, and we can do it in harmony with a quality environment.